I'm going to share with you today a curated list of the top five most important skincare practices, in my opinion, that I've gathered from the pro estheticians and dermatologists that I watch here on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I'm extremely passionate about skincare at my age. By the way, I'm 56. My name is Melissa. I've been on YouTube for eight years and had my skincare journey going for about seven years. So I really take this very seriously and I feel like what I've gathered here today can really help you up your skincare game and I hope that you do enjoy that. And if you're new to the channel, I hope that you will take a minute and subscribe. If everybody would please hit the like button, I would really appreciate that. And I always wanna say a special thank you to all of my subscribers that are here with me for the duration. You are so good to me and I appreciate you being here and supporting me and I love all of the kindness that you show in the comment section and how great you are and that does not go unnoticed by me. I just want you to know that. Before we do get in the meat of the video and get going on those skincare practices, I always get asked what I have on for a top and my makeup, fingernails, jewelry, everything like that. So I will make sure that all of that is listed down below. Usually scroll clear down to the bottom of the description box and that's where that will be so keep that in mind hopefully that will help you it's really easy to shop because I make sure that I put all of the links there for you as we do get into this video I realize that some skincare practices might be more important to you and I want to hear that from you so while we're going through the video if you think of anything that you think is really super important in your skincare routine please stop the video and go down into the comment section and comment that so that we can all learn from you as well as learning from the input that I'm giving today. All right, so top five skincare practices that I feel are super important, especially if you're a woman that is, has mature skin over the age of 50. I feel like one of the things that went around a while ago was that you don't have to cleanse your skin morning and evening. I had to cringe when I heard this advice. The reason is, is because it is so important to cleanse our skin to get off any of the gunk that we have that's built up in order for any skincare that we follow with to be effective. Now, I believe what I was hearing was that you can go to sleep with your skincare on, and then when you get up in the morning, you can just either splash water or go ahead with your skincare. Why this is such a worry to me is if you are using a heavy moisturizer at night, which you should be using serums and moisturizers because during the sleep cycle, that's when it really can penetrate our skin and our skin is rejuvenating. We want to be using very effective skincare right before we go to bed because it's going to be the best time for our skin to repair itself. But if you get up in the morning and you have residuals of those that skincare, any moisturizer, if you use oils, lots of women love to use oils at night, any of that that's left there and you don't cleanse before you start is going to keep your skin occlusive, meaning that there's nothing going to be able to penetrate. So if you use any skincare in the morning, your vitamin C, maybe you like to use a peptide, maybe you like to use some sort of an antioxidant, anything that you use in, you use in the morning is not going to penetrate your skin. And that's really a crime in my opinion because you need those ingredients on your skin, especially vitamin C. Vitamin C is such a wonderful ingredient for our skin, helps repair skin cells. It is an antioxidant itself, so it also helps with elasticity and collagen building. It is so important. But if you already have something on there, it's not going to penetrate. So the first one is do your cleansing morning and night, no matter what. And make sure at night, if you're taking your makeup off with some sort of an oil or a balm, that you do that double cleanse because again, that oil, that balm could keep your skincare from penetrating and you don't want to do that. So we want squeaky clean skin before we start our skincare. All right, that was number one. And by the way, there are three ingredients that every single esthetician and dermatologist will not live without, especially in their own skincare routine. So we need to pay close attention to that. The first one is vitamin C, what we just spoke of. Elastin, collagen, repairing, keeping the free radicals off our face, all of those things is just a powerhouse ingredient in our skincare. Number two 
is retinol. You can get it in the prescription form, you can do it in over the counter, whatever. Retinol is the gold standard for building elastin and collagen in our skin and helping to keep us look looking younger. It's going to work from the inside out and it's really the only thing that is proven to work from the inside out to build collagen. So that is a huge, huge ingredient that we need to be using. Number three is an SPF. And I said this in my last video, if you're not using an SPF, why are you doing skincare? Because an SPF is so important in fighting off all of the UVA and UVB damaging rays from the sun. And that leads me into my number two best skincare practice, which is not only wearing SPF, but reapplying SPF every two to three hours, especially if you're out in any sort of direct sunlight. Now, this can become a challenge, I know, but this is so very important. The people that have the youngest looking skin, they're either covering themselves up completely or they're reapplying their SPF. And as far as I'm concerned, when you're out on a beach vacation, you don't necessarily wanna be covering yourself up completely. Yes, sit under an umbrella. Yes, have a pretty big brimmed hat, but we want to be able to be enjoying our vacation with our significant other or family. So it can be challenging. I have two options here though for you today. And that is, this one, which I just think is an absolutely lovely way to reapply, especially if you're wearing makeup. This is from Naked Sundays, and this is the Hydrating Glow Mist with an SPF of 50. Beautiful mist on this. It comes out so very fine. And I can reapply this, I don't care how many times during the day, and my makeup does not get disrupted. This does have a very light orangey fragrance to it might be some other fruit, but I'm getting the orange out of it. And in reapplying sunscreen, this is my very favorite. I absolutely love this one. But if you're somebody that is oily, this one might be perfect for you. This is from Derma E, and this is their Essential Sun Protection Mineral Powder SPF of 30. So what this is, is you can kind of see right there down in the middle, there's a powder that comes up through this brush. So very easily you can reapply during the day this powder and not only get your SPF, but you're touching up that oily spot. Maybe you get breakthrough through your chin, through around your nose, wherever, but you're getting that great benefit of being able to get your SPF as well. These are my two very favorite in a lot of humidity. This one always comes through. And then this one, as far as being able to reapply over and over and over again, is just fantastic. Number three, and this goes along with kind of number one is in that if you're not getting the gunk off your face, then nothing's gonna penetrate. Number three is about taking care of those dead skin cells. Now we turn over skin cells every day, all day long. And so at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, we want to be exfoliating. It is so important to slough off the dead skin cells. Now I'm going to get some pushback on this because I do both chemical and physical exfoliation. My skin does not get roughed up or does not get torn apart by using a little bit of a physical exfoliation. However, I do usually do a chemical exfoliation. And if, you're, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know that my favorite thing to chemical, chemical exfoliate with is from Dermalec, and this is the Self-Esteem Sleep Serum. This has glycolic, salicylic, and ascorbic acids in it. Now the glycolic and the salicylic are fantastic ways to turn over that skin and then slough it off. And then you get the added bonus of having the L-ascorbic or the vitamin C in here as well, which is super healing, super protecting, love vitamin C to be able to do all those things we talked about earlier. Also, you don't need to do this every day. As a matter of fact, if you have sensitive skin or if you're just starting out in doing exfoliating, you do not wanna do this every day once a week to begin with and then work up to two to three times a week. Three times a week is more than enough to be exfoliating your skin. The other one that I've been using very recently and is such a beautiful exfoliation that I use this every day as my cleanse in the morning is from Good Molecules. This is the Pineapple Exfoliating Powder. 
This comes out in a powder and then you work it into a lather by putting in a little bit of water and rubbing your hands together until all the graininess is gone and then you just use it as a cleanser. And I have found this to be an absolutely beautiful way to take off any gunk that you have on and also exfoliate your skin. Super gentle. This one is hyper, hyper gentle. I wanna make sure I tell you that because I know that sometimes we have sensitive skin or we have skin that is prone to be reactive. I don't think that that's going to be the case with this. I love this exfoliator. Now, as far as using a physical exfoliation, Paula from Paula's Choice says that all you need is a wash rag to do that. Some people feel like it's okay to use a scrub. Murad has a beautiful cleanser that's a BHA cleanser and it has a very, very fine granule in it. I think it's fabulous. There is also a little bit more of a big daddy on the exfoliation scale from Skin Beauty. This one is one that has all kinds of ingredients in it that also leave your skin looking beautiful. And then afterwards, you have the serum on after you've used this product. I will caution you that a very tiny bit of this goes a long ways and you do wanna use water with it because it is quite rough. This one is for somebody that appreciates a physical exfoliation. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of you that, that will say, do not physically or rough up your skin with anything like that. There's a lot of controversy among dermatologists about whether this is okay or not. So use your own discretion, be your own best advocate, and decide whether or not physical exfoliation is something for you. I use it once a week, just so you know that. Number four of the top best skincare practices is if you use red light therapy masks, you are going to want to perk your ears right up for this one because did you know that you can make your red light therapy mask 10 to 20 times more effective by doing one step before you go in with your mask that is something that i did learn from my very good friend penny from Penn Smith skincare here on youtube if you're not watching penny you so need to penny talks about that green tea can be the catalyst for making your red light therapy mask so much more effective. And who doesn't want something that we're already doing to be that much more effective? I know that I do. This one is the Benton Deep Green Tea Toner. This is the one that I have been using for years. All you do is put a few drops in your hand, splash it on your clean, dry face, pat it in, let it sit for, I don't know, five minutes, as long as you can, and they say up to 20 minutes, and then go in with your red light therapy. And you will see accelerated results from red light therapy and red light therapy is also very helpful in keeping our skin looking younger, fighting fine lines and wrinkles. And especially if you have reactive skin, red light therapy is soothing and calming. I will put my mask down below. It's a little bit pricey, but I will try to also find one that isn't so pricey and list that for you so that you guys can look down below for that. All right, number five. And this is again, probably something that I'm going to get a little bit of concern about or people are gonna say, well, that's that's not really something that needs to be done. For me, this is an absolute, and that is using silica internally. And I use this one, this is called from Cell Food. This is a 40 day supply. This is essential silica formula, foundational support for nails, hair, skin, teeth, bones, joints, muscles, connective tissue, gums, heart, brain function. Helps accelerate the body's natural recovery time. This is a dietary supplement. You put 15 drops in your water or whatever you drink every day. It is tasteless and odorless. And this has made such a big difference for me. If any of you know, or maybe you're new here and you don't know, I have been through several surgeries in the past few years where my body has been completely torn down and I have just felt terrible. I got turned on to this by Christina with no H. She's over on TikTok and she is a wonderful skincare junkie like me. She is not an esthetician. However, she is this powerhouse lady that digs deep into ingredients and she has been touting this for years and years and years and I think that this is so very important because all of our connective tissue, our skin, they, there's this vast amount of it that is made up of silica. And we start to not get enough silica in our 30s. And then as time goes on, it gets less and less that we're getting. So this supplement to me is better than any supplement that I'm taking at the moment. And I try to take a few supplements. I love sal palmetto. I love ashwagandha for helping my hair health. 
They're also really good for your skin and your nails, but I have a problem with hair shedding. This one has also made my hair super strong, not just helping with the hair fallout, but also helping with the strength of my hair because I was noticing my hair being thin and super fine. And as I'm using this and being very diligent about using it every day, I'm noticing things turn around. Now, so I left this one till the last because I knew that I would probably get some people going, eh, what are you talking about woman? But do a little research and I'll try to leave an article or two in the description box about silica. It really is tremendous on what it can do and how it can help our skin not only heal, but turn over. You know, as we get older and as we age, that's the problem is our skin doesn't turn over as quickly as somebody in their teens or their 20s. I also do take a collagen supplement, but I did find when I added in the silica that it elevated things even more. And I know I'm gonna have somebody ask about the collagen supplement. So I'll go ahead and I'll list that down below too. I have a specific one that I take because it doesn't have any weird taste. But yes, this is a really good one. I was talking about the living silica for a while, but it was pretty darned expensive. I find that this one is much less expensive and it's every bit as effective. So I really have been enjoying having silica and having it boost my overall skin, hair, nail, joints, heart, all of those things help. It's just very essential to our bodies in general. So that is it for my top five picks of what the pros say and what I have experienced in my seven years so far skincare journey. I hope that you did enjoy this video today. And again, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That does help me out so much. And I can't wait to hear from you down in the comments section and all of your comments. Thank you again for being with me. And I hope that you come around really soon in my next video. Take care, my friends. Love you. Bye.